Good morning, everyone. Good morning, panelists. Good morning. Good morning. First, let me take the opportunity to welcome you here today to this panel discussion. And we are here to discuss the volunteer program and also to educate the public as to the importance of volunteerism. Let me just say a little about the National Volunteer Program. National Volunteer St. Lucia is about inspiring people, changing communities. We engage more than 500 volunteers every year. We have more than four volunteering programs across the island. We instituted chapters in the various communities to focus on the needs. What is volunteerism? According to Collins' English Dictionary definition, volunteerism is the principle of donating time and energy for the benefit of other people in the community as a social responsibility rather than for any financial reward. Why volunteer? Because it is a valuable and rewarding experience. Volunteers are the only human beings on the face of the earth who reflect this nation's compassion, unselfish, caring, patience, and just plain loving one another. I would like to take the opportunity to welcome our panelists again and to introduce them. We have Ms. Zephemi Boyd. Hi. Secretary of Volunteers in Lucia, the V4 chapter. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> we have Mr. Bennett Charles, volunteer of the Volunteer National Organization. Thank you. And we have Ms. Brittany Nicholas, Vice President of the Volunteer St. Lucia Schroesel Chapter. I will start with you, Ms. Boyd. Sure. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and also the V4 Chapter? Okay. So my name is Stephanie Boyd. Hi. So um, from V4, originally large youth V4. I am originally like, okay. I am 21 years of age and I am the secretary, like she said, of the volunteer chapter, V4 chapter, volunteer and Lucia V4 chapter. Our chapter has been initiated from 2015. Let me see what I can say. We originally started with Randall James. He's no longer with us, he's in Taiwan. But he set a principle for us that volunteerism through the community, our time, our community, our chance to make a difference. And I'd like to say that volunteerism is a very big part of my life because I believe that without my help, people, like, um, without my help, people will not be like active. Mm -hmm. I try to be an advocate for the youth, although I have a long way to go, but I think <laughs> I can start to somewhere. Thank you. Okay. We move over to Mr. Charles. Sure. Uh, in terms of, well, generally I'm from Castries, the community of Castries. Mm -hmm. uh, my volunteerism really started with, I think, being a past teacher at the George Charles Secondary School and really staying after school and assisting students mm -hmm. and getting involved in the National Youth Council and certainly the St. Lucia Red Cross. I'm currently a volunteer with the St. Lucia Red Cross. Mm -hmm. With National Volunteer St. Lucia, I think that process started during the first CPL in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And you know, I got the opportunity to really get involved in that organization. And certainly I think the opportunity to meet other persons who traditionally been part of, I think people more saw the, the St. Lucia Red Cross as the volunteer organization in sure. St. Lucia. And they, they, I think because of the, you know, they've been made that mark. And I think it was a great initiative where the government of St. Lucia itself decided to start a volunteering program. Mm -hmm. And I've been there since. Mm -hmm. So, and the pleasure, I think, for me, volunteering is really about giving back whatever you can, the little that you can, as much as you can at the end of the day to someone else. I always go back to our concept of Kudme. This is basically what volunteering is about. And it's been, I think, certainly beneficial to me as an individual mm -hmm. and to persons who have assisted and generally I think St. Lucian themselves. Okay, great. 
and we go over to Miss Nicholas. Just tell us a bit about yourself. Well, I am the vice president, as you say, of the Schweizer chapter. We are we have we launched on the twenty sixth of May, twenty seventeen. So we recently had our anniversary. Mm -hmm. We we strive to go with our motto, which mm -hmm. is giving up our time to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I believe working as a volunteer, we we have impacted many lives mm -hmm. and. We plan on reaching out more to the youth to encourage everybody to do something for somebody because that would be better on our side. Okay, great. Um, so we're going to move on to our discussion mm -hmm. as to Mr. Charles. Sure. Why would you encourage any individual to volunteer? I think Sadly, we live in a, in a society that has been more, I should say, in the past there was, the, there was a saying that it, it took a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And I think we've become very individualistic now. Mm -hmm. we've, I, I think, for want of a better word, we've become very selfish with our time. Mm -hmm. We've become very, you know, it's about me. And there is the great need for, I think, people to reach out more and assist. Mm -hmm. Some missions do have that culture. I think this country was really built on people giving back. Mm -hmm. The Kudme, everything. Even our, our political parties stemmed out of trade unions, which were really people volunteering for the betterment of other persons. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to get back to that, where persons can really and truly be less selfish, be more community-oriented, mm -hmm. and giving back. And I would encourage any person, be it young or old, my daughter is, is already volunteering as, 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 a, as a 15 year old, to understand that when you volunteer, it's not just about giving back to someone or to a community, mm -hmm. but to you as a person, the benefits to you in terms of simple gaining some new skills, developing some experiences at the end of the day, and really making new connections. And I think too often we sit back and we want people to make a difference mm -hmm. when we ourselves, I think, have that power to do so as much as possible. Okay, great. Miss Nicholas, would you add anything to what Mr. Bennett just said? Well, people t often tend to think it's as like doing as you say, boo work for right. mm -hmm. for people that make the money and mm -hmm. be doing it for free. Right. But then they need they need to go back to the hospitality as you said when you mm -hmm. can see that mm -hmm. you can also derive personal benefits. Right. On a point where you could when you learn new skills, when you do things so it will it it makes you feel better about yourself, mm -hmm. boosts your self confidence and it also helps with your job prospects. Mm -hmm. When you put volunteer on your your C V you tend to the volunteer the employer would mostly value that because you're actually giving back mm. as opposed to being selfish. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, can I reiterate this point? Yes. Okay. I believe uh, people should volunteer because it's an act of selflessness. Mm -hmm. mm. I as a volunteer, I give back to the community because I know that I'm making a difference in the community. Mm -hmm. And I really social, a uh, social level, uh, economic level, or even psychological level. That I know that at the end of the day I get a self-gratitude knowing that I could help somebody in need. I heard Miss Nicholas mm -hmm. mention employers. Mr. Charles, what advice or what would you say to employers who do have volunteers employed within their organization? What are the benefits and what support do you think they can give to the employees or even the organizations um, offering volunteer service? I think one of the things we must start, first of all, even before saying what are the benefits, mm -hmm. is that in St. Lucia, I don't think we've really taken the time off to explain to employers themselves mm -hmm. what are the benefits of actually having persons in your organization who are, who are volunteers itself. Right. So I think there needs to be that education process mm -hmm. uh, because we automatically believe that, okay, if I'm working in an organization, that the businessman will automatically say, give him time off. But we have not made it, I think we have not painted the picture of why having volunteers in your organization or your business is beneficial to the business. So I think that's one thing we need to do. Right. I think as volunteers, and as sure any organization mm -hmm. at the end of the day. The next thing is, too often we don't, and I like to use that word, we don't put to dollar value volunteerism. Mm -hmm. You have somebody who decides to give you five 
hours of their day. And we don't add a dollar value to that, but that's a dollar value. And businessmen like to see dollar values at the right. end of it. So we need to speak that language. I think working with, with other organizations, too often mm -hmm. you have sports, young sports persons. I mean, even currently, Carnival Queen Contest. And I think this year, we must see that a lot of the organizations where the young girls are employed are really mm -hmm. outgoing in terms of giving them the time to, to really volunteer. But I don't think all business persons understand the impact that volunteers are having. And so being able to have a, a, someone in your organization who's given up their time, what image does it create for you as the business mm -hmm. in allowing that employee to go out and volunteer their time? I don't think our business persons have learned how to use that. So again, that, that is a process. So it is beneficial in terms of the company, and I think the, the, the branding for the company and the opportunities for the company, that's why we have corporate social responsibilities. They know why they're doing it. Right. But I think people only see the big companies. Mm -hmm. But imagine that you have a little company in the community being part of a volunteer program or even encouraging your, your employees to volunteer mm -hmm. says a lot about you as the person and as the company and it really shows how much you're giving back. But I think we need to start by assisting these business places to understand that process. Uh, Ms. Boyd, would you like to add anything to that? Yes, I can. Well, I'm speaking from experience of my volunteer group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a soup kitchen every third Sunday of every month. Mm -hmm. And we actually utilize most businesses like Nagico mm -hmm. and Axel Finance. Mm -hmm. And they usually sponsor our soup kitchen every third Sunday, like I said. Mm -hmm. Usually the sponsorship comes from like f 200 to $500. Mm -hmm. And usually the staff come to help us. Mm -hmm. So I believe that businesses do prosper and benefit from our volunteering because they see what volunteering is about right. and then they also um, get their name publicized through mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. On account of what they said was everything. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to come back to you. Sure. Uh, Ms. Boyd. Can you tell us a bit of what um, Volunteer St. Lucia, the V4 chapter, some of the activities that you do? Um, can you educate us on that? Sure. Well, we have a list of activities for the year. We usually start with our soup kitchen, like I mentioned a while ago. Right. We usually assist about 30 students who are underprivileged, and they, we know that they cannot really afford to have a proper meal. Mm -hmm. So we try our best to see that um, they eat a proper meal, and like mm -hmm. we educate them about volunteerism. We also play games with them. We mm -hmm. also we just show them what, like you said, a real form of kunme is about. Mm -hmm. We also have an educational expose that usually happens on the 30th of September. Mm -hmm. That's also centered around the children of the Freeford Primary School. Mm -hmm. We usually have like educational games, activities, and anything that could involve the youth. All right. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Charles. Sure. Um, being with the central body of the National Volunteer Program, mm -hmm. what are some of the activities that you have engaged in, and how has it um, impacted on you personally? For me, like I said, I think the process started up with, with CPL mm -hmm. cricket and being able to volunteer at, at the matches. Right. And at that process, I think uh, I got involved in so many different things. Right. Once I was involved in the radio communications department at CPL, then mm -hmm. I was responsible for delivering the lunches to all the volunteers. You got to feed people. <laughs> right. And I think that's what I enjoyed the most, really and truly serving the other volunteers. Mm -hmm. Because I think too often, uh, we forget that the volunteers themselves mm -hmm. need to be taken care of mm -hmm. and that is forgotten sometimes. Right. And I can tell you an organization that's very important to them is the Sanitia Red Cross. Mm -hmm. The Sanitia Red Cross has a, a welfare program mm -hmm. that when you have volunteers out in the field, there needs to be other volunteers taking care of them. Mm -hmm. And so being involved in CPL cricket through the National Volunteer Organization, I enjoyed really doing that part, taking care of the other volunteers. Right. Also getting involved in jazz and carnival. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think it brought to the, to the forefront is that too often in volunteerism, we forget the humanity mm 
-hmm. For example, the, the, uh, Ms. Boyd spoke about the, the feeding program mm -hmm. for the underprivileged. Mm -hmm. We as volunteers need to always remember that the people we are serving, we should always remember that they are human beings mm -hmm. and we should always assist them in that and you should never see them as less human, not because they are less fortunate. Mm -hmm. I think too often we've seen examples, even during her, um, as fortunate to get involved during Thomas, mm -hmm. you know, volunteering during Thomas and the way you treat someone who has gone through a, a negative experience mm -hmm. says a lot about you as the volunteer. So we must always remember people's humanity. And I think even volunteering the St. Lucia Red Cross and volunteer St. Lucia, it brought that to mind that remember people's humanity at the end of the day. If you're serving somebody, you serve them just as you would serve any, no matter the, the economic class, there is everything, and remember that. And I think too often, sometimes volunteers forget that. Mm -hmm. They believe, okay, I'm helping you already, take what you get. Right. But remember that people's humanity, mm -hmm. the dignity of being a human being should always be at the forefront when serving as a volunteer. And I think Volunteer St. Lucia, along with the Red Cross, you know, reminded me of that and brought that back to the forefront. Great. Okay, Ms. Nicholas, could you again um, let us know about some of the activities um, that you engage in through Volunteer St. Lucia, the Shurzel chapter? Well, we recently, we, no, that was last year, December, mm -hmm. we took care of an underprivileged baby, which it was, that, that was the point that brought us really mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. because there was this underprivileged family and the, the, a baby was born and the house was in a deplorable state mm -hmm. so we rebuilt the house we painted we helped it was in connection with the church actually and we took care of the baby brought clothes food you know we missed the baby each of us took a turn you know and they they recently adopted this baby mm -hmm. and recent our most recent our most recent project was the gdd project that's mm -hmm. a good deeds day mm -hmm where we went, we went around, gave out plants, planted a, com planted a tree in the Reunion Primary School. Mm -hmm. And when we did this, we didn't only do it for our volunteer, with our volunteers, we, uh, we tried to include the, any regular person. When I say our volunteers, I, didn't, I meant the registered members, mm -hmm. but then we included the non-registered members. Everybody came out from the community, gave this, gave a plant, we went around giving out plants to everybody. We also fed the, we had, we took one day to feed people in Sufre. Well, we just went to town, the Sufre town, and we had our sandwiches, juice, mm -hmm. and we gave it out to the public. So, yeah. Right. We tried to so, do these type of things. Okay. Yeah. So, um, indirectly, you all have some sort of impact on someone mm -hmm. someone's mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we are due for a break now. Um, we will be back um, again to speak on why volunteer and the importance of volunteering. If you're HIV positive or have an STI, having unprotected sex with multiple partners puts them in grave danger. You'll expose every partner and their present and future partners to HIV or another STI. Use a condom every time you have sex. You can live a productive life even if diagnosed with HIV. Remember, early detection is key to your survival. Be responsible, protect yourself and others. Help stop the spread of HIV and other STIs. Welcome back viewers. We are here discussing um, the importance of volunteerism and why volunteer. We have with us our panelists who are very eager to share that information with you. I go back again to Ms. Boyd. Okay. Um, what is the whole orientation process um, to become a member of the Volunteer St. Lucia V4 chapter? Well, to begin, we usually ask somebody to invite you to the meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the first step. And you actually have to attend the meetings for about six months. So. We usually see how, you're, how willing you are to join our chapter. Mm -hmm. Then we notice your will and your zeal to commit to volunteerism. Mm -hmm. But volunteerism is not an easy task. So. Mm -hmm. We know that you have to wake up early sometimes just to volunteer. We also understand that uh, um, 
you also understand that you have a busy life and you're taking out your time mm -hmm. to come and volunteer. We usually start our meetings every third Saturday at 2 p.m. in the primary school. And um, we usually induct members after the six months. Mm -hmm. They're required to pay uh, $5 subs every, every month. Mm -hmm. I think um, most of these subs go into like community work and also the sub chapter um, sub chapter like developments okay yeah. great miss nicholas well at the in the chosen chapter we just like the before chapter we asked some each member is supposed to invite another person mm -hmm. and when you invite the person when they come to the meeting then they we ask them why would they want to become a volunteer right. and we also give them a form to fill mm -hmm. stating the reasons why we want to become a volunteer and mm -hmm. based on that then we see are you actually willing to become a volunteer or are you just doing it for for example job prospects mm -hmm. and, right. and school activities mm -hmm. but then we do not shut out any members to mm -hmm. see per se you the only thing that's required most likely is that the other volunteers they recommend you they say well yes she's actually w we actually want to do it okay. and it used to be when well, you had to be 18 years but mm -hmm. now they have brought the age down to 13 right. so you come to the meeting then afterwards then we have the the actual initiation you pay a fee of mm -hmm. 20 but that's just for your shits mm -hmm. right and then we go from there and then afterwards if you become dominant then we go out to you we ask you do you really want to be part of the volunteer chapter still and right. you know, mm. yeah okay great um i have before me the vision of volunteer saint lucia which is volunteer saint lucia will seek to add value to national events and community life in saint lucia through an elite pool of skilled trained and experienced volunteers whose attitudes, skills, and knowledge will be tapped to support these experiences. How does that vision impact you, Mr. Charles, as a person? Oh, I think what I like about the vision is the fact impacting national development. I think too often people think that, okay, you know, I'm in my little corner of St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. How can I actually be part of the bigger picture? Mm -hmm. And I think every time as an individual you're able to give back or support another St. Lucian, right. that is a national, you, you actually contribute to national development mm. at the end of the day. I mean, being involved in, in the Thomas recovery mm -hmm. and even a number of other initiatives, mm -hmm. getting involved, when you could be at CPL and being able to interact with someone from another country mm -hmm. and make them have that St. Lucian experience. You're selling St. Lucia as a product. You're selling the service of the organization also because you're branded. And people will remember, they won't necessarily remember me as the person, but they remember that brand. So if I mess up, they'll remember the brand. Yeah. And they and we've had experiences where volunteers, I mean, messed up and people said, Where's the moon volunteers? Ah, mm -hmm. Because we've had we've had difficult times. Right. And so you always create you're always in an opportunity or you're in a position where you could actually sell St. Lucia mm -hmm. and every time you get to sell that as a as a good thing, you contribute to national development. So this is really and truly what what I think I'm I'm connected to when it comes to to the vision statement being able to to impact nationally yeah great what about you miss boyd i believe that our vision impacts mm -hmm. us on a community level like as volunteers i always believe that we impact the community we impact others like socially social socioeconomically and psychologically mm -hmm. okay i can use my personal experience i'm the secretary of the fifa chapter mm -hmm. I have learned from my previous job to take down minutes, mm -hmm. take it down effectively, mm -hmm. and record certain times in, times out. I, I believe that has helped me, volunteer Sanusha has helped me to further myself because without volunteer Sanusha, I would not have known the stuff that I know now. Mm. And I was also saying our vision also impacts the community level because we, we seek that the skills of everybody else mm -hmm. will be used. 
Like people have um, different skills. You know, some people are intellectually intellectually skilled, and some are physically skilled. Right. We intend to use uh, and combine all skills together. Great, Miss Nicholas. Well, yes, as they both said, that we <laughs> tend to everybody has a different skill set, and that's. As one of our initiatives in December, we plan to have a workshop. Mm -hmm. That's an internal workshop, per se, right. where there is a nurse. She's good mm -hmm. at red, red, the nurse. She wants as mm -hmm. red cross, and she she'll help with the mm -hmm. th this aspect. For example, the medical. Mm -hmm. What you can do CPR. So then we all of us have a chance to mm -hmm. learn about CPR. If there are people that what there's a volunteer that can breed, mm -hmm. we have their teacher how to breed. Oh, yeah. If they're good at math. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has a different skill set. You put you if it's two of you, you put it together, and let's say the two of us will have the for one day, for one Saturday, the two of us will have a makeup seminar, right. and then another. Then the next week, we the two of them have a braiding seminar. Everybody has a chance to learn something new, and then so that they could go out and teach other people. Okay, yeah, okay, great. Um, we move on to the mission. Mm. Um, Volunteer St. Lucia exists to create a renewed spirit of volunteerism in St. Lucia by recruiting, training, certifying, and celebrating volunteers, while encouraging and organizing challenging volunteer opportunities through strengthened coordinations with the private sector and civil society. How do you see yourself adding to the mission? Okay, I see myself adding to the mission just by volunteering. Mm -hmm. Cause, because, I like I said, if I do not choose to volunteer, mm -hmm. then this, that thing could inf affect the community like, so in so many ways. So. Okay, like there are people that are actually at their home right now and they choose not to do anything. There are some mm -hmm. people that are not working. Mm -hmm. the, the, like, they only think um, the best thing they can do in their life is go on social media go on the streets, go out partying and stuff. But I believe that uh, I, just by me volunteering, mm -hmm. I make a difference and I can like affect somebody or impact them in some way that I will like have it to lasting, a lasting impression on them. Okay. Yeah. As part of the executive for volunteers in Lucia V4 chapter, how do you celebrate the volunteers of V4? Okay, that's actually an interesting question. Because our anniversary had just passed. Mm -hmm. We celebrate our anniversary usually in February. But due to complications, we push it back to May. As, like, as a dinner. We usually celebrate it for dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, it was held on the Beacon in Sufre. That was on the 5th of May, mm -hmm. 2018. I thought everybody got jazz tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Um, I, wasn't there. Okay. Um, I also know that you all adopted a school in View Fort. Yes, we did. Can you give me some information on that? Okay, so that's the View Fort Primary School. Yes. We usually have our meetings at the View Fort Primary School. Mm -hmm. And we also try to uplift the primary school, like beautify it. Mm -hmm. we, we have intentions of beautifying the front of the primary school, but we working on it. Okay. We also repainted the Harris with Harris paint mm -hmm. the lunch tables uh, of the primary school. So, like anyone could just come there and they'll see that was the work of volunteers and which have before chapter. Great, good, um, Miss Nicholas. How do you see yourself as the vice president of volunteers and Lucia um, Shrewsbury chapter? How do you see yourself adding to the vi sorry, sorry to the mission, and also um, just give us a little bit of more information with regards to the good deeds day um, that you just hosted in Shrozel. Okay, um, as the vice president, I feel that um, we, we tend to, we don't look at it as I'm the vice president and I'm in charge. We look at everybody has their opinion, everybody is everybody's the president and the vice president, we see. so we're a family. And we, we come together and we speak about, we, it's not everybody holding themselves, we, we interact, we, if I have a problem, I'll tell you I have a problem, you have a problem, you could always come, talk to the whole board and everything. We tend to have different initiatives, we try to, 
right now we're trying to do it internally mm -hmm. to encourage members and so because even volunteers don't feel appreciated then they don't want to actually go out and help others because mm -hmm. if you're just doing things and nobody's telling you thank you then you you feel no gratitude you feel no motivation to do it so right now we're on a motivation drive we try to motivate the other members and as with our different skill sets we as i spoke about the workshop and everything that'll be a good an initiative to encourage and the good deeds there we we adopted the reunion primary school we already have the library where we have our meetings every every w last wednesday of the month we have a meeting at the library so we adopted this and we we repainted the library you know decorated it put more books you know every time we go we clean up we so then we actually make it make the, the librarian feel like you know we're appreciative of where we are every wednesday and um when we when we did the good deeds day we adopted the reunion primary school where we beautified the community where we beautified the school with the plants and everybody came together when each, everybody planted a, tr a plant and you know so our initiative is to go back every time to see how it has been how it has been growing and right now our other initiative for the primary schools in, in Schwezel is that we are going to in December as a Christmas drive we're going to have a math a math um, package giveaway so we choose a class and then we give away our math box to everybody in the class great mm -hmm. Mr. Charles, Charles, as a volunteer with the main branch, mm -hmm. how do you see yourself um, adding to the mission of Volunteer St. Lucia? I think the, just the fact, I think like Ms. Boyce said, just the mm -hmm. fact of, of volunteering, mm -hmm. I think you're adding to the mission. And like I said earlier on, mm -hmm. I think there was the lust of, of volunteerism mm -hmm. in St. Lucia. People have become very selfish. People have become very me, very, you know, it, it has to be all about me. Mm -hmm. And I think the initiative really and truly to, to have such a, 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 an organization like now, Volunteer St. Lucia, give the opportunity, I think, to St. Lucians to become, I mean, more caring again and to right. get back into the spirit of the Kudme spirit and mm -hmm. get back into that, that giving spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think just being part of the initiative, mm -hmm. I think, is mm -hmm. lending to the mission at the end of the day. So we do f deal for a break. Um, we will be back shortly. When persons with TB sneeze or cough, healthy persons nearby breathe in the droplets and the bacteria can lodge in their lungs. People with weakened immune systems such as HIV AIDS, alcohol and drug users, smokers, children and the elderly are most susceptible. Persons with a cough should take precautions when in contact with persons in public places. Cover your mouth when sneezing and coughing. Visit your doctor or health center. You must complete your treatment. TB can be cured even with HIV. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB and HIV. Protect yourself and others. Welcome back, viewers. We are here discussing the importance of volunteer, volunteerism and also um, some of the activities and objectives um, that we as volunteers in Lucia currently have existing. Um, what are some of the benefits of volunteerism? Um, Ms. Boyd. Okay, so the benefits of volunteerism, especially in the Viewford community, mm -hmm. you mentioned that we adopted the Viewford Primary School, mm -hmm. and that's so true because we try to financially assist the school in any way possible. Mm -hmm. Like we have a scholarship fund, well, it's based around uh, from, not from five, a uh, current student. Mm -hmm. Whenever we see like current students around the corner, we try to assist the child by giving her a scholarship. Well, him or her. Mm -hmm. We notice that some of the students are very underprivileged in the community. Mm -hmm. Although we cannot help all of them, we cannot just try to help one with her school fees, her books, and sometimes her school uniform in the whatever school that she successfully attends. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Another one is uh, the same part of the scholarship fund. Mm -hmm. We usually raise our funds ourselves. Okay. So usually we have barbecues every month 
to get this friend. I know this barbecue is going to be very challenging. Mm -hmm. but I could remember last time we had a barbecue and it, the room kind of made it physically impossible for us to do it. Right. But regardless, we succeeded in getting like $2,000 on the day. Mm -hmm. wow. It was challenging. I must say it was challenging. Right. But uh, we, we pulled through. Okay. We also have like raffle tickets. So we have raffle books, I mean. So we would pass around town, well, the V for town. And we would see if anybody is willing to donate at least five dollars to us. And we would try to tell them or insist that it's for a child. Right. But some of them, some of like submissions, mm -hmm. eh? submissions for free. <laughs> they don't really like to give money unless they get something out of like any reward. Mm -hmm. Right. So we try to get some value for their money. Mm -hmm. So we usually have like uh, five to seven prizes. We try to do as much as possible to see that everybody will, be, will get rewarded, rewarded in the okay. end. Okay. Oh my bad. So we usually get sponsorship from Coconut Bay, mm -hmm. um, Sugar Beach. Mm -hmm. We also get sponsorship from the from Chanel's. They usually make cakes for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Charles. Mm -hmm. I know you are a very experienced um, volunteer. Share with us maybe some ideas that you have or, or because I know you are involved with some other organizations. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could share with um, St. Lucia and also with us as to what are some of these ideas are. For us, uh, one of the things we found that was, and I think I always go back to it, was the, the fact that people believe that when you're part of an organization mm -hmm. and you're a member that it is you you devoted to this group so yeah. you know the shows that people might be that's where we stay in. we we, we volunteer with shows there not your twin but shows <laughs> <laughs> you know and if you view for chapter you the view for chapter mm -hmm. and if there's a national thing yes but we have an initiative where we're about to launch three mm -hmm. organizations united and strong which is the organization i'm a, st a staff mm -hmm. member of her store which is a women's oriented organization and girls of a feather which focuses on on young girls mm -hmm. which is called 758 could mm -hmm. so 758 well hashtag 758 could mm -hmm. is really rebuilding the voluntary spirit of saint lucians mm -hmm. And what is hope to do is that we're able to, to share volunteers across the network. Mm -hmm. So not because I am a member of, of the Chozelle chapter that I can't go across and volunteer in Viewfort. Mm -hmm. And so what we're hoping to do is to really, really and truly partner with the National Volunteer Organization mm -hmm. and, and hopefully that in principle that will happen very early. And really to be able to go now and mobilize people to understand that they could share their voluntary spirit mm -hmm. across the board. So not because I am with one organization, that means my skills need to stay mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And for that, the other thing is really to go on a, on, a, on a social media campaign. I think you said earlier on that some people just like to stay on social media. Mm -hmm. You could be a very good volunteer if you love social media. Get them to manage your, your IG page or your Facebook page mm -hmm. or your Twitter page. I think one of the things we need to do is to the organizations that Can promote I? volunteerism. Yeah? Well, our chapter do it is like PR. Mm -hmm. Right. So we actually have a Instagram page and a Facebook page and we usually post our activities every time we go out volunteering. Mm -hmm. So we do have people utilizing the skills in that. In that way. Yeah. Right. And, and I think sometimes people believe that, you know, okay, guys, I just tell my woman, chill. But I think the <laughs> pool, our pool of volunteerism is expanding. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, it was not okay. You needed people to go out there and, and, and go for cutlass and, you know, and go for it. And some people, they could stay at the room and volunteer right. at the end of the day. So we need to start understanding, I think, also the dynamics of volunteering, how it has changed. And so with this initiative, we're hoping that more organizations can get involved. Somebody does not need to leave their home to be part of an organization or to volunteer their time. They could mm -hmm. stay home and tweet their fingers off, you know, get involved in some way or the other. They could be the one that calls and networks people. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need to leave their home. So we're hoping with 758, well, hashtag 758, <laughs> that we could really rebuild that spirit and get organizations around St. Lucia showing volunteers across the board. Okay, great. Um, I have some benefits of volunteering. And... Um, 
I'm hoping that you could add to it mm -hmm. okay. and um, expound on it a bit. People who engage in volunteering report a greater sense of purpose and a meaning to their lives. Mm -hmm. I can testify to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> volunteering enables people to play an active role in their society and contribute to positive social change. Mm -hmm. Volunteering helps to break down social barriers and offer people an opportunity so to socialize with people from different social and cultural backgrounds. Volunteering is an opportunity to learn new skills and can provide employment. Mm -hmm. Would you like to add to what I just said or I can also can any one of you relate to <laughs> Can I? Sure. Mm, sure. I can also bring up a point. Mm -hmm. It also helps you with um, your schooling and uh, when you seek in a mm -hmm. job. Mm. Most employers are actually looking for people who volunteer because in Tunisia we don't have that much training basis mm. right. Right. for people. Mm -hmm. And I believe volunteer in Tunisia is a medium or a platform to use or to utilize your skills in any way. Mm. And I think that's what goes back to, I think, what we're talking about in terms of the business places. Mm -hmm. We need to be, for example, if, if, if Ms. Boyd or Ms. Nicholas decide, look, I'm going to volunteer 35 hours a month, mm -hmm. that somehow she's applying for a job somewhere. There's some sort of certification of recognition of that particular area mm -hmm. as being certified or some mm -hmm. form of, of recognition that this was actual mm -hmm. training at the end of the day. Because you know now it's. You leave, you, you leave secondary school, you mm -hmm. go to South Louis, you can't get the job because you don't have the experience, <laughs> but you need the job for the experience. Yeah. So, so I think hopefully that's some sort of thing that working in the business places mm -hmm. that, you know, your volunteer time could lend to some form of, of experience and recognition by a potential employer. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, on my, in my experience, mm -hmm. well, like, it opens new doors to me. Mm -hmm. For example, I I don't like to go out in public. I don't like to be on cameras. I like to be on the I like to be on the back. Right. And I like to be backstage. But then the Beaufort the Beaufort chapter hosted mm -hmm. the the pageant and mm -hmm. I went up. I pageants are really not my thing. I right. I really don't like it. But I still went up because it was fundraising for the community mm -hmm. right. and it's it actually brought up my self-esteem per mm -hmm. se and mm -hmm. <laughs> and opened, as I said, new doors to me. For example, mm -hmm. now I'm okay with cameras, not I'm so okay, I'm but you know, I'm on. putting makeup on. <laughs> 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 and um, f and when you say when you 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 tend to meet with other people, mm -hmm. like when you work at CPR, you t you work with different people, you mm -hmm. work with celebrities, mm -hmm. every youth. So basically, you, that's PR for yourself, not mm -hmm. only for the, the chapter. And people, you tend to get new links, get new friends, then you, that can bring you up in the working world. Mm -hmm. So you know, those that don't have experience, you can yes. get friends that can get them jobs. Mm -hmm. yes. Just by like, just like showing that you're willing to do something to better the community and not for yourself, that could actually make somebody feel like, okay, well, you're such a nice person, like right. you should probably you know, do your job. Do your job. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, St. Lucia, uh, viewers, um, if you are considering um, becoming a volunteer, it's, you need to be genuinely interested in helping others, mm -hmm. be, be flexible and willing to commit to your volunteer activity, this is very true. <laughs> possess a cooperative spirit and love making with teams, Attend all training activities organized for you. Be 13 years or older in good health. Accurately complete a volunteer application form. Be willing to commit without pay or compensation. Ms. Boyd, for somebody wishing to become a member of the V4 chapter, where would they get access to an application form. Okay, 
Since I am the secretary, mm -hmm. they usually have to go for me, either myself or Ms. Francine Marius, the president of the chapter, mm -hmm. or Ms. Min Polio, that's the vice president. Usually it's electronically um, available to people. So yes. I either email you or if you want a hard, hard copy, that will be no problem. Okay. But you mentioned something. You have to be in good health. Mm -hmm. yeah. I believe people with disabilities can also volunteer. Mm -hmm. Cause, because, um, can I know his name right now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rambo. Rambo. James. Yes, Rambo. the famous James. Rambo. I believe that uh, he has made himself mm -hmm. like well known in Tennessee right mm -hmm. now. He was well, formerly our coordinator, mm -hmm. and I met him through volunteer Tennessee. And I admire his zeal and will mm -hmm. for volunteering. He's presently now the president of NC. Thank you. <laughs> 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 and I believe that he is. Uh, vitalizing all mm -hmm. areas of disabilities mm -hmm. regardless of your if it's minor or major but right. yeah Fine. but uh, just to add to that i believe when they said good health i think they were thinking of not being ill mm -hmm. oh. i don't think it was <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it was um persons with disability yeah. um as a result um volunteer st lucia is actually meeting with the persons of disability to see how we mm. could incorporate them yeah. into the okay. whole volunteerism I aspect. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, in terms of Miss Nicholas, how would one get access to an application form or what's the um, well, process? Well, right now, as we are in the membership drive, oh well, this will stand mm -hmm. for as long. You can go to any member as since we're inviting we're inviting people to join it's available of any member you could go ask any member uh, i would like to join this and so then they will if they don't have the form they will come to us and get mm -hmm. the form or you could get it at the meeting that you attend mm -hmm. you get the form you fill it out and afterwards then you become a member but you must you must be interested to mm. see right well, that's about it right mm. but um I'm just going back to the to the point because mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot of you say interested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, why would you use that word interested? Um, do you believe that people may be volunteering for various <laughs> reasons? Yes. Um, because I notice all of you keep on saying interested. Yeah. Okay, I can say something. Mm -hmm. Okay, we. We currently have 43 members mm -hmm. in our chapter. And I'm not sorry to say, but out of um, the 43 members, mm -hmm. we only have like half of them. Active? Yeah. If that happens everywhere. Right. So, like I was saying, we only have half of the members active or half of the members attending meetings. Mm -hmm. So, when we point out you have to be interested or you have to have this zeal or this passion mm -hmm. for volunteerism, we're referring to like you making a commitment and you're sticking to that commitment. Great. Well, but one of the things, uh, I mean, I want to slightly differ mm -hmm. on that. Um, I think too often when we ask people to volunteer, mm -hmm. yes, there's a thing that you'll be committed. Now, my commitment may maybe be at a certain point in time. Right. It may not necessarily be 24-7, 24, mm -hmm. 24 hours for that organization. Right. And so I believe, while I agree with you in terms mm -hmm. of people being interested, mm -hmm. but also the when people have spent the time in right. an organization. Right. Sometimes people have reached a certain point in time for them, they need to move mm -hmm. on. And we need to recognize that and maybe revisit them and say, okay, what's going on? Okay. okay. So for me, that's, that's a point I wanted to clarify. Okay. Because okay. some people actually get change of jobs, change of location, so it's very hard. Mm -hmm. Can so I also add another point? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> We actually, we actually have protocols set for this kind of uh, instances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, if you have another job, we could simply write to the secretary and in, informing her that you cannot no longer or you no longer wish to to become a volunteer as the chapter or hold mm -hmm. such position anymore. Okay. But there are some people that insist on just uh, living a life uh, with all following protocol. Okay, right. I but I understand where you're coming from that because there are some people that join the volunteer corporation just so that they can have it on their CV mm -hmm. and just so that they can say, well, I'm a volunteer, but you have never volunteered two hours of your time. Right. Right. Yeah. Or they start well <laughs> and then all of a sudden. No. 
because some people tend to just like just forget because they join the chapter they pay the money so mm -hmm. they feel like you know they're it's part a, but it's a brand and right they choose right yes right. yes right. yeah so that they can say well i'm a volunteer but then you have not actually volunteered mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah okay um so before we end is there anything that you would like to say mr charles yeah for me i think as much as possible there we do have so many organizations in Lucia where you can volunteer and you mm -hmm. can be part of from if you're going to school you can start in your school mm -hmm. school loaded with clubs your community start in your community mm -hmm. wherever you are if there's an opportunity and you i must support and if you're really interested in volunteering not just for bragging rights mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but to actually want to be part of a process right. do that reach out and you might be surprised how people you know you don't even have to be a right. member of a community. Precisely, you have yes. to remember. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if my colleague wants to add anything. I can just add a quote. Mm -hmm. Gandhi once said, if you want to see a change in the world, become yes. that change. Mm -hmm. And I believe that should be like a motto for some volunteers. Mm -hmm. right. I believe it is a motto for volunteers. Mm -hmm. I believe it's a motto for myself. I want to see a change being uh, something being done in the community. I will look towards it. Great. Miss Nicholas? Well, yeah, and there's another quote that I like for myself is mm -hmm. that the service you do for others here on earth is the rent you pay for your room on, in heaven. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love this quote mm -hmm. because then it just shows you that whatever you can do to help somebody, that wouldn't only benefit, the person will have a new feeling like, you know, if, like if somebody do something for you, you just feel so happy, like somebody actually cares. Mm -hmm. You don't know if you can That's help true. somebody. The little things you do for people, you don't even know how much that impacts their life. You, right. could, you could just wipe somebody's hand and the person will feel like you care and then they, that saves them from committing suicide you never know right so i believe that joining being a member of the volunteer corporation mm -hmm. it just not only it markets yourself but mm -hmm. it markets you mentally physically emotionally everything you get to interact with other people so i would encourage any of my friends to join them the volunteer corporation Great. okay to end, I read an article and agree with this statement. I see volunteering as not working for free, but working for experiences. You can't put a price on that, can you? Something everyone should try. We hope that what you have listened to is enough to convince you to start volunteering today. Again, I will go back to our panelists to give you information as to how you can become a member of Volunteer St. Lucia through the Vufort chapter, Chosel chapter, or any volunteering organization. You should become a volunteer. Ms. Boyd? Okay. Like Professor mentioned, we do have um, documents, like applications. Mm -hmm. It can be electronically ready for you or if you prefer a um, hard copy mm -hmm. we can provide for you one way to attend it is via messaging me or mm -hmm. getting in touch with me you can also attend the meetings and we welcome to accept new members okay, great. mr charles i would give you the opportunity mm -hmm. because i know like i said any organization i know that you're a member of many mm -hmm. <laughs> organizations, <laughs> organizations volunteering organizations so is there any organization that you could give information how anyone who is interested in becoming not just a member of Volunteers in Lucia, mm -hmm. but a member of one of these organizations? You forgot to say something? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, very simple. I think right now the Sun Lucia Red Cross is really on a volunteer drive also. Mm -hmm. I mean, just link up on Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> You will see, if you don't know the St. Lucia Red Cross, then definitely you know the St. Lucia. Oh, yes. I think just link them up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Mm -hmm. There is a process, an induction process, a subscription fee. Mm -hmm. The office is located at VG. You know, link them up. Certainly that's available. Uh, with us at United and Strong, you can hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, mm -hmm. United and Strong St. Lucia. We're available. And I mean, any organization, that most organizations in St. Lucia right now are on social media. If you're interested, mm -hmm. www.herstwa.com an amazing women's program girls of a feather mm -hmm. again another amazing women's program dsd we have timber who's going for carnival queen mm -hmm. part of do something different you know these young ladies are doing so much work here link them up on social media and trust me 
you will change lives mm -hmm. and you will make a difference. Okay, great. For the shoulder chapter, we could, for example, you can meet her, you could also link us on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook and Instagram, our name is Shoza Volunteer. You could email us at Shoza Volunteers 2017 at mm -hmm. gmail.com. This is not only to join the chapter, but if you want us to help you with anything, if you have any ideas, you could always email us or inbox us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Mm -hmm. You could, the name everywhere is Shows of Volunteer Chapter or Shows of Volunteers 2017. You could just search us <laughs> and um, you could come to any of our members or anybody from Shows you could just go and ask. Yeah. <laughs> you can go ask anybody and then they can give you mm -hmm. a copy of a member's name. You could also contact myself and on Facebook as Zoe Nicholas. Um, any of our, our, our president, Janice Attil, she's very good in PR and also CELA. If you know any of them, you could just always contact them. Every, all members are quite equipped with everything that they would need to join the chapter. So you could just ask any of them for any information and then we can help you. Okay, okay so I'd like to share with you viewers the screening and interview process for Volunteer St. Lucia. This process is designed to ascertain the authenticity of the information provided in the volunteer application form and will diagnose the strength and weakness of candidates. It will be conducted by designated officials of Volunteer St. Lucia and will aid you in deciding the volunteer activities for which you are best. Upon successful, successful completion of the interv interview, you will undergo an orientation session which will address the following aspects of Volunteer St. Lucia. The background of Volunteer St. Lucia, the vision, mission, and ob objectives of Volunteer St. Lucia, the policies and procedures, the expectations of volunteers, major events and activities targeted, other training workshops, evaluation and certification, and once you have completed this workshop, you will then be ready to undergo the core skills training program. Thank you, St. Lucia. Thank you for viewing our discussion on the importance of why volunteer.